I'm in third year. I'm in third year. Guys, you have no idea how excited I was to put on this April. It's like, I look so bougie. Anyway, for those of you that do not know me, I'm Sleepa Samperiki, and on this channel, I make videos that got to do with university life, nursing school, and international student experiences. So, if that would be something that you'd be interested in, definitely hit the subscribe button and join the family. So, today I'm going to be speaking about my experience getting accepted and getting into nursing school at the University of Western Cape. So after a few weeks back, after my video of the struggles of international students, I had a few people that kind of came to my inbox and asking, so tell us the story of how you got into nursing. And I had a few international students that actually came and they were telling me their stories and that sort of thing. So I thought I should do my very first official story time, just explaining to you guys how I got into university the struggles that went with it this is my experience it doesn't mean that you will have the same experience and i don't want people to think negatively about my university it's just how you know it's just how it is as an international student and unfortunately that's the reality of it so you can take it however you want as a learning curve or as you know bringing the light to the reality of the university and all of that whatever you want to take it take it that way but this was just my experience i've no bad blood with the university yes the whole thing was very annoying but i still love my university i just love how it is i mean i'm working with the people that i was fighting with when i was trying to get in so yeah anyway let's get into the whole thing so i'm going to be looking down because i've got it i need to so that I don't go on a rant, I've got a timeline on a piece of paper just to keep my thoughts on track. So don't mind me if I keep looking down and stuff. So the whole thing started in March, April of 2018 when I was in my matric year. The applications opened around March, April time. Me and my friend, we started applying. I applied to a lot of universities. I applied to VETS, to University of Johannesburg, University of Pretoria. SMU, Stellenbosch, CPU team, um, UWC, State, now already said Stellenbosch. I applied to a lot of universities within the province I'm in, which is the Western Cape, and outside, but it was all within South Africa. Because going overseas, honestly, guys, applications are just some, a lot more complicated going outside of South Africa than in South Africa because I mean, I've been in South Africa for a while, so it was slightly easier. So, obviously, I applied in South Africa. So, the universities that I applied for nursing was VIT, yeah, it was VIT, it was UWC, it was no cput there was a whole thing that was going on with cput where some people were saying it's not a full degree others were saying it was but I actually later found out that it was so i actually never applied at cput for nursing but they do have nursing and then i applied at stellenbosch so i was looking at those three universities for nursing and then the other universities i'd applied for other things i'd applied for like um like human life sciences i applied for biomedical engineering i applied for medicine at smu you know my whole career choices were all over the place anyway so i applied cool uh most people don't get their responses by like december so i wasn't really stressed in between i was getting some responses from some universities i got accepted to a few but you know it wasn't what i really wanted so i just sort of kept them on a hold and also because most of them they were waiting for nbt tests and they were waiting for our final results to see if things do change and that sort of thing so cool i was fine with that i did everything early like none of my applications were late everything was sent on time i made sure that all the things were there that were required of me as a normal student and as an international student i made sure of that because i didn't want anything to happen with my application where they say something is missing cool so that happened and then we came to december of 2018 I'm done with my trick. People, you know, are getting their responses, and I'm still getting responses from the courses that I wanted. I got a few acceptance here and there, I got a few declines. I was like, okay, that's cool, that's fine. So now towards the end of December, you know, we're all at home, we've gotten our metric results, and you sort of not sure, like, okay, so where exactly am I going? And that sort of thing. 
so then i started getting worried so i started inquiring i think i actually started inquiring end of november just after we finished our metric exams still like december i'm starting to inquire i'm like what's going on and most courses or most universities that offer nursing they will tell you there's a lot of intake that's happening we'll let you know as we get our results and that sort of thing everyone who's applied for nursing they know that nursing takes forever to give you a response so i was like okay cool then towards the end of december i'm inquiring now they're telling me a whole different story they're telling me oh no we can't apply we can't process your application because you do not have a SACWA evaluation form so a SACWA evaluation form is where they take the results from your country and they equate it to the value of the marks in south africa but i was explaining to them i did my metric in south africa i did my whole high school in south africa so i did not need a sagwa evaluation form but they did not want to you know respond They're like no we'll get back to you and stuff like that so i kept on inquiring kept on inquiring and they kept on telling me the same story no we cannot accept you without a sagwa evaluation form it changed from sagwa evaluation form now they're telling me they need my end of year result i mean my end of year metric um certificate i'm like how am i gonna give you my metric certificate i just did my metric all south african students don't have their metric certificate so why are you expecting it from me since we all did metric at the same time cool so they kept on telling me those stories kept on telling me those stories cool i'm like okay it's fine let me see what's going on with vets and the stalies cool so vets eventually i think it was beginning of january or late december i get a response from vets they send me oh you've been accepted for nursing and i'm so excited I'm like, oh you go i'm in and all of that jazz and everyone knows when they get a response from the university they give you a timeline when you must accept that offer so in my letter it said i have three working days to accept this offer okay so i was like okay fine i've got three days i can find out what's going on with the other universities and i can make a decision afterwards cool within 24 hours this had retracted my offer and given it to someone else cool so now i'm emailing them i'm like okay why is my why is my offer being retracted since they told me i have three working days there was a whole thing that was going on my mom had to start messaging people that are in joburg uh she found some people that worked at vet and then i had to explain to them the whole thing and they're trying to fix it it was just a whole mess that was going on with that cool so then i started inquiring with uwc then they're telling me no we cannot accept you you don't have a sacro evaluation form na 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 selling boss they were telling me they are full so they could not take me at all so now all my doors for nursing were closed and i'm like okay obviously this year is just not for me so i left it i was like okay it's fine nursing is just not gonna happen this year let me rather take a gap here Cool. so then i started applying for a pair i don't know why everyone thinks of doing or pairing when they want to take a gap year but i guess it's the most easiest way to get money because you oversees the currency and the whole thing anyway so i'm doing the whole appearing thing i'm applying i got an agency that was going to help me you know everything was getting sorted out i was being assigned to a family i had to get my whole police report i had to get the whole medical check thing that was going on so you know I'm like, okay, cool, appearing is gonna happen. I'm gonna go spend a year overseas, get my money, and then come back and reapply for nursing. Cool. So I'd given up on nursing. I thought, you know, it was just not gonna happen that year. And then obviously they were now saying they can no longer accept me, they are full, no one is getting accepted for nursing. Um, they have a quota system for international students where they can only take a certain amount or a certain per percentage of international students compared to south african citizens cool so early january or mid january i'm hearing that people are getting accepted for nursing at uwc so now i'm confused and there were international students that were getting accepted so now i was confused i'm like okay they told me they're no longer accepting their full but I'm hearing people are getting accepted. So I was speaking to a lot of people around me. I was, there was a lot of students around me that were applying at UWC or I had relatives or my mom's friends that had knew someone. You know, there was a lot of connection thing happening. So they knew someone in UWC, CPU, and stuff like So they were telling me people are getting accepted. Go find out what's going on with the application. Cool. So I think 
yeah then it was beginning of feb when they started doing orientation literally in the orientation week me and my mom we went to uwc and we're like okay we're gonna go find out what is going on with this application since people are getting accepted but they're telling me that i can get accepted cool we go to the front desk i explain the whole story again i literally have had to tell the story so to so many people that was getting tired anyway i explained the story of what happened the people that i was calling and stuff like that they told me that the only play person who can go over those people is the dean but the dean is not available he's on main campus he's doing orientation and it'll probably be unavailable the whole week or he'd come back late so they told us to come back another day my mom is very stubborn i think i do get her stubbornness from her anyway she insisted that we're gonna wait cool so they sent us to his office it was upstairs we we're sitting there for hours like hours people that know orientation orientation takes forever and he had to be there for when they do the general orientation then you had to be there for the community health and sciences orientation it was just a whole thing so he was there the whole day so he came back around four five ish in the afternoon late evening we're still waiting by his office cool he walks in he was like why are you guys here and i'm like i'm here to talk to you about my application and nah, 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 nah. he was like okay you guys are very late but it's fine come in so we're going to his office and then i had to retell him the whole story and this is a tip i can give you guys if you're doing an application or you're just doing any application that doesn't even have to be for university interview whatever please take down the names of the people you speak to even if you have to ask them so many times what is your name who am i speaking to please get those names because what happened to me is i was calling people i had the numbers of the people that i was calling but when you call a university anyone can answer the phone so it could be anyone that i was speaking to so i didn't have actual names of the people that i was speaking to i just knew someone from the chs faculty so i'm explaining to him he was like well the issue now is we don't know who you were speaking to or who was telling you about the whole psycho evaluation form they need to tell me then he was telling me now about this quota thing we've already reached our quota so we can't help you na 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 so I'm like, it's not my fault that you guys got kept on insisting that I need a psycho evaluation form. You know, at this point, I was very emotional. I was frustrated. I was angry. Like, like when I have all those mixed emotions, you can feel it in my voice. Like, literally, my mom had to hold me. She said, just like, calm down. Just calm down. Because when that happens, I tend to be very um, short with people. But you're also speaking to the dean. So you also can't be like that. So I had to calm myself down. I'm like, okay, cool. So what's going to happen? Because it's not my issue they were requiring things of me that were unnecessary cool likely he was understanding he was like i'm gonna do some investigations come back i think he said come back tomorrow or he said i'll call you one of those so i think the next day or the wednesday because we went on monday so the wednesday or the tuesday i don't really remember guys this was almost about three years ago so i went to him I went back to his office he was like look i did investigations i couldn't really figure out who was telling you this information and stuff like that but here's what i'm gonna do for you i'm gonna give you the offer oh my gosh goodness i was so excited like i literally could have jumped and hugged him it wasn't COVID at that time so i probably could have but anyway i was very excited and i was smiling like crazy anyway so i got my offer um he said i must now go accept the offer and then i was like you know what let me accept the offer for you go pay registration right now and guys this is during orientation i'm like okay cool he accepts the offer i have the offer i must go to pay registration fee cool so i go to school um i had to sort out the whole registration thing and that's when a whole other battle started i didn't know this information cool so i get to the office you know i had expected to pay the i think it's about 4290 the registration fee i was expecting that was all that i had to pay the registration fee i got registered i start and the fees get debited order like that was what was happening in high school like in high school there's a certain deposit that you pay at the beginning of the year and then everything else is in david orders well i expected that to happen i get them they tell me well you're an international student that's not how it works one you must have a medical aid fully paid up for the year cool second thing you must have all your fees paid up 
for registration and at that time i think it was thirty-one thousand something so they're expecting me to have all that money for registration and i was just like i don't have this money where do you expect me to have it so they refused to register me so now we are stressing this money has to be found somewhere and we don't know where to find it so i did back a buddy i was asking people my mom was asking relatives friends like like literally my whole church knew that this was happening and people were giving money and stuff like that like i am truly grateful for them like literally they were my savior i'm not gonna get emotional but anyway so they're like literally they saved me like i think like my whole church and everyone around me combined they paid for half of my fees but that took about two weeks <laughs> to get all that money together so in that two weeks i was illegally going to class so the, the whole orientation week out so it was actually three weeks so the orientation week i was going i was unregistered and for those of you that have gone to like in-person registration orientation thing <clears throat> they would tell you like your first year they call them peer mentors or something like that um it's the people that orientate you of the university they will literally keep on telling you must go get registered you must go get your student card so when everyone else is being told to do that i can't because i'm not registered i only have a student number but i can't do anything with it i can't access my school system i can't get a timetable or nothing so i literally had to find people that were within nursing and just ask them to give me emails and messages and stuff like that so for the two weeks of like actual school i was illegally in class so i don't know if it can even call me illegal but anyway i was not registered student so i did not have access to anything whenever a class list was passing by me my name was not on it so i kept on adding my name to every single class list i saw when the teacher says my name is on it then they ask what's going on then i have to explain like literally i had to explain my story to so many people it got so exhausting and draining and it happened for two weeks you know like it's sort of like you're burdening people with what's happening in your life like oh, okay so why are you in university if you don't have fees <sighs> the whole thing was just stressful and obviously when you're asking people for to send you notes to send you emails communication via whatsapp and stuff like that people are gonna ask why you're not registered and you have to explain the whole thing honestly that part was the most straining than the actual finding of the money because the amount of questions you get there were a lot but anyway i survived i found like really good friends that i'm still friends with now <laughs> that still helped me during the orientation or the registration <laughs> weeks because i always have to register late it's just yeah anyway things just don't always come together as you want so they definitely have been helping me out since first year and i'm totally grateful for stacy Khafsa, and kasima like i'm totally grateful for you guys anyway so yeah so two weeks eventually i got half of the payment that they okay so what happened is i went to the student credit management and i made some arrangement with them and they said it's fine you can pay for half and i think they said they would register me for one semester and then um they would debit order everything else and then in second semester i would have to go to them again and tell them to register me for the second semester and then i had to pay for the medical aid so eventually i got registered and that was sorted out and you know things started falling into place obviously you'll be lost because you don't know how to use the school system because you haven't had experience with it so things were still slightly late but you know you manage you catch up and life moves on so that was my struggle of getting into university so every single year registration is still a struggle for me because they'll still require that same thing of i need a medical aid i need my full fees up front and the thing with the student credit management um depending on who you speak to one person might be very nice to you and say just pay the registration fee and everything else will debit order <clears throat> 
while if you go to another person they might tell you that um you need to pay half and the rest is in debit order some will say it's fine pay the registration fee we'll register you for the full year others will say only for a semester so it's always that you know flipping of a coin type of thing where you just hope that the person you're going to speak to will allow you to you know register for the full year and only pay the registration fee and everything else get debit order and the annoying thing is like i was working at the university as a student assistant and they would cut my salary in half i would only get half of it that the half would go to pay for my school fees so just that whole thing of just being an international student is exhausting and is tiring but yeah that's my story that's my struggle every single year i'm probably still going to be experiencing it till fourth year uh, yeah it's just i've honestly learned to live with it i just know that the month of registration and orientation is stressful because you know things are just not together but that's just life that's what we go through as international students and i know that someone is going to be thinking so why are you in university if you do not have enough money to go to university unfortunately i do not have rich parents i don't come from a rich background and that sort of thing so for me going to university is trying to balance it out but unfortunately i do not have money to pay for it so you know you just have to work with what you have and the other thing is finding bursaries and scholarships for international students is worse than mission impossible like there really isn't any and yeah even if you find some it's that you don't qualify for it or they have a cab so they can't take you and there was yeah there's just stuff that happens with that that it's not always possible for you to get funding because like with south african citizen you've got what nespers you've got each province has got health bursary and then there's got other private ones that come up so there's a lot more options for you guys and for another school like the university itself they offer bursaries for south african students um and then you guys get the discount at the beginning of the year where if you pay your fees in advance they take out a small amount we do not qualify for that so even if i was to pay all my fees <laughs> all at all they would not give me a discount for it so those are just the struggles that we go through and we just push through it honestly you learn to deal with it honestly it builds your perseverance and strength through it just like you know what this is the coin that i've been tossed and you just gotta work with it and i don't want you guys to you know feel sorry oh my gosh you know life is tough yeah life is tough and i've learned to live with it but i also don't want people to pity me i really don't want that so yeah and anyway, i'm just going on it right now this is my story of how i almost <laughs> didn't get into university hopefully you guys enjoyed this video definitely give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or you can ask me any questions or if you're confused about something of how i went through it and all of that definitely put it down in the comment section or if you want it to be a more private conversation you're more than welcome to dm me on facebook and instagram at sleep parking until next week friday 12 pm south african time when i release a new video have an awesome semester bye guys Thanks.